Hi, I'm Carl from Carl's Corner, and today we're going to have a look at the navigational features on the front panel of the new PM8000 meter. So let's get to it. As you can see here, we have the new PM8000, and by default it goes to a summary screen, which gives us voltage line and neutral, current average, energy, and power factor. And you can see some representative values there. The only option you have at this point from this screen, because you see that we have some selections under here, and all are grayed out except this one over here. If we press that, that's going to give us our min, max, and then our value, our current value. Min, of course, is the, the yellow, the max is in red, and then your current value is in the middle in the green. Okay? And then we can scroll down and look at current average, and then that's that, and then you can revert back to the main summary. But the main thing we want to talk about with the front panel here, the, the key to all the navigation is this new home button. So there's only one button down in the lower portion of the meter, and it's the home key. So the home key will always get you home. So if we press that, that's going to give us some options for other things that we can view from the front panel of our meter. And we'll go through just briefly here. You have summary, alarms, basic readings, power, energy, events, and then using the down arrow key here, oops, it has a timeout that takes you back to the main screen pretty quickly. Um, if I start scrolling through here, down to energy, events, power quality, I.O., nameplate information, custom screens, and finally the setup menu, but we're going to cover the setup menu in part two of this video. So scrolling back up to the top, summary, we've already seen that. If we go down, I'm going to skip over the alarms for the moment and go down to basic readings and have a look at that. Okay, so now you see that we're on basic readings and then we have some selections here. If I click the, the checkbox here, it'll expand that and then you can select voltage, current, or frequency. So if we want to select voltage, we go ahead and hit the selection once more and then it gives us our line-to-line -line voltage and then you have a down arrow so you can scroll through the different voltages that are available. Line to neutral, voltage unbalance, and that's all. And then you can scroll back up to line to line. Same type of functionality over here with the right button where you can do your min maxes for any of those. I'll show you one of those. I'm not going to go through every one, single one. So here's our voltage line to line, uh, min max, and then our values at the moment. And then we hit the back key. And then if we want to get out of this, we can always hit our home button that always take us back up to our, our main menu. So we can look at voltage, current, and frequency for that. Another thing you can do here is if you, um, we hit the home key once more, if you scroll back up to the basic readings and then hit the checkbox, it will collapse that selection. And that's true for any of the selections in uh, the menu here. If we go to power, click the checkbox, it expands out to your choices and then you can select those. So if we want to look at demand or power factor, say we want to look at power factor, we scroll down to that one, click the check, and it'll give you those values. And then you can have mins and maxes as well, if you wish. If you want to get out of this, always go to the home button. Um, I'm going to collapse the power section just by going back up to the, the header and hitting the checkbox. Um, let's go up and have a look at alarms, which I skipped over at first. And if I click on alarms, you have active alarms, historical alarms. Okay, so if we click on active alarms, I don't have any current alarms, no active alarms currently. But if you did, they'd show up in here, and when you want to acknowledge an alarm, you have to hold down the two, mut uh, two middle buttons. So you see a red line drawn across here, and it says acknowledge all and you have to hold that down. There's no current alarms. So if I home button takes me back one, I can go down and look at historic alarms. If I check that, then you can see some alarms that I had in here with the relative importance. The blue is the is a lower importance. Uh, the red is, is more critical. And that was a current sag on phase three. Now the other thing that you see over here on the right hand side where it has the green check boxes, you can see that uh, that means that those have already been acknowledged and then we can scroll through each one of these and then if we want uh, more information it'll give us we click on the checkbox and it'll give us the alarm that it was high priority what the date of the event was the duration when it was acknowledged 
and so forth. Okay. Back to the main menu here. So I'll go up, collapse that menu, and then I can go through the rest of these in a similar fashion. We do have power and energy readings, so we'll take a quick look at those. Power, you get a power summary. So this gives our KW total, KVAR total, KVA total. Down arrow, get our power for phase A, KW, KVAR, KVA. And so you go through the individual phases here, A, B, C, and that's the choices for there. Back up. Uh, I can also do the min max thing here. It'll give me the min maxes. Always hit the home button and go back up and collapse this. And then I can look at energy. Here again, very similar. This is energy delivered minus received, which means the net energy past the meter. Kilowatt hours, KVAR hours, KVA hours. Scrolling down, you can have just delivered, just received, or the first one, which was delivered minus received. And f uh, we're going to look at events. So here again, we have some events. Now, one of the things, you'll see some redundancy here between the alarms and the events because all alarms are events, not all events are alarms. So that will give you, like you can have other things like front panel changes uh, or setup changes that have been made will show up in the event log as well. You can scroll through those. You can click the green eye for more information for the date and time um, and so forth. Then we have power quality. This is a really useful feature of this meter. We go in there. You see that we can look at our harmonics and our phasers. First, we'll go down and look at the phasers. If we click on that, you'll see that this is one of the few meters I've seen that not only does it have a color display, but it gives you a nice three-phase uh, phaser diagram. So you can troubleshoot and make sure the meter is installed correctly. Check and see if you've got any CTs or PTs reversed. It's a very handy feature when you're installing this meter to have that right on the front panel. Escaping out of that, going up and having a look at harmonics. So as we're looking at the harmonics here, one of the things you can do with this meter, let me go back there, you can select harmonics, um, but then you also have this plus sign over here on the side. If you hit that, it will give you the ability to pick your voltage harmonics for the phases. And if you select one of those, it'll actually give you a spectrum diagram of all the harmonic components for that particular phase, which is another thing that's pretty unique to this meter. Haven't seen this type of feature on many other meters. Okay, so I'm going to escape out of that. And finally, uh, well, maybe not finally, we've got two things left. We're going to look at our I.O. So if we have inputs and outputs on the meter, we select that, and then you can look at your digital input statuses. And so we have... Uh, have three digital inputs on this particular meter, just on the base model, uh, S1, S2, and S3. They're currently off, but they'll show the status of that input and also the count, the number of times it's transitioned. Here again, this is really handy to have this on the front panel if you're connecting I.O. and you want to see if it's working right at the front panel. You can also have digital outputs configured. And, but you see the state of the, the did. Uh, only one digital output on this particular meter. Okay. So collapse the I.O. selection. And finally, we're going to look at the nameplate. And this will give you the model number, the serial number, and the firmware version for this particular meter. If you arrow down, there's also a user-defined area uh, for owner, tag one and tag two, which is any user information that you might want to include on this particular meter whether it be the location or the switchgear nomenclature, something like that. And you can also have some custom screens. So if you've defined custom screens, they'd show up here. This particular meter doesn't have, it's fresh out of the box, no meter, uh, no custom screens configured as of yet. Okay. So that takes us through the basic navigation of the front panel and how to look at all the different values on our particular meter. Stay tuned for part two where we're going to have a look at how to do basic setup for this meter, the PM8000. Thanks. Be safe.